Good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, welcome, welcome to Survival English. It's Monday, 5 p.m., and we're here streaming from Cali, Colombia, you know, live from Cali, Colombia, on behalf of uh, the program Colombia Nosune, Cancillería de Colombia, the Embassy of uh, Colombia, you know, the um, uh, Council in, in Houston, Texas, and Centro Colombo Americano, Cali. Uh, here I am, Willie as yes, your teacher. Hello, Lina, you're first. Thank you, thank you for being here just on time, you know, to start this session 25, you know, believe it or not, session 25. Luceni Patricia, good afternoon. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah, welcome to your English class. Hello, hello, Feneri, Yesenia, and Paula, you know. Thank you, John Freddy, Holly among the women. You know, thank you, John, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for being here on a Monday, 5 p.m. As usual, we have our class. Okay, Juliana, here you are again. How are you today, Marisol? All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here, guys. This is your English class. Mr. George, Mr. Frias, how are you today? Hope you are doing all right. You've been uh, maybe practicing your English uh, whenever you have the chance. Remember, this is survival English. If this is your first time, Magali, I've seen you before. Rafa, hello, hello. Uh, this is your first time, so relax, okay? This class comes and goes. Siempre tenemos contenido para los diferentes niveles. No se preocupen, están en un lugar súper seguro para aprender algo de inglés. All right, and this is uh, your English class. This is all yours and we are here to learn a little bit of everything. We learn some grammar, we learn some vocabulary, you know, and, and we learn uh, pronunciation, we practice it, you know, and all that. So Carolina, Mary, Luz Dari, uh, Julie, Eddie, Adrian, Monica, Carol, thank you. Thank you for being here on time, guys. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad to see so many of you. All right, wherever you are, remember every Monday, 5 p.m. Colombian time, we are here in the English class. I space in, you know, this this crazy world just to practice your English, all right? Okay, thank you, thank you so much, guys, for being here and, and taking this time to practice your English. We are going to practice English. Thank you, Mr. Frias. Um, I, I got something to tell you, guys. Javier, hello. Uh, Luis Alberto, hello, hello, hello. All right. Uh, we have our class today, 5 p.m., 5 to 6. Next week is Holy Week. It's, it's a week, you know, for a spiritual retreats, you know. So we won't have class next week, but we will have the class after Holy Week. Okay, so keep it in mind, keep it in mind. Anyway, we'll send you a message in, in the in the Facebook page. Remember that the classes are recorded and you can watch the classes in the Facebook, on the Facebook page. Luis Alberto from Bucaramanga, Ray Esther, Carolina. Thank you guys. Carolina Del Mar, I love that name. That's great. Thank you for being here. And it's time to practice, you know, it's time to practice some English. So let me tell you what we are going to do today. You know, learn a lot of English, all right? So here we go. Are you ready? I know you are ready. You are always ready with your fingers there, typing, you know, and communicating in this crazy class, but, but a great class. It's great to be here. I love it. I totally love it. All right, so let me tell you what we are going to do today. We are going to review, as usual, siempre empezamos con el repaso. Qué importante es eso, muchachos. Qué importante es volver, repasar, mirar, entender. So we are going to start right there with a review of the main uses of the word like, all right, that we studied uh, last class, okay? Uh, also, we're going to discuss the use of, discuss the use of three modal verbs today. We are going to start working with modal verbs. Uh, in, in this uh, opportunity, we're going to check three. And then we have a pronunciation activity with a difficult sound in English, always bringing some pronunciation activity and our idiomatic expression at the end of, of course, as well. All right. So um, let me say some more hellos to Lisaida Rada from Chile. Oh, I got some students from Chile. I love, I love, uh, you know, Chile is, is a great place. Monica, Carolina. 
Uh, Luis Alberto, Angela, Aida, good afternoon. Yeah, from Bogota, Carmen from Bogota. I, I mind that that is, is called in Bogota. Believe it or not, it, these days is being called in Cali. It's been raining every day, every day. It doesn't look like Cali anymore. But anyway, it's hot. It's hot, but it's raining, you know, and that's the way it is. You know, Cali these days, that's the way it, it is. All right, so here we go. This is what we are going to do today. So let's start, let's start, let's start, guys. I mean, no more blah, 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 all right? So last class in section 24, we discuss the use of the word like. We learn that there are four different uses of the word like. We can do four different things with the word like, all right? And those four things were, number one, to ask about a person's or object's characteristics. We can talk about characteristics using the word like, all right? We can also ask about general preferences, all right? What a person like or dislikes, all right? We can also ask about a person's physical characteristics, you know, the physical characteristics. And we can also express witches. This is what we, we uh, check last class. We did some exercises. So today we are going to do a review. Uh, let me say hello to Mary Powell from Supata, Cundinamarca. Wow, I, I don't know that town. I mean, it's great, you know, good. Um, Nayla from Norway. Nayla, you are so far away. I mean, it's colder. Sandra, Elsie from Barranquilla. Barranquilla is nice. I love it. All right. From Sipaquira, Carol, thank you. And San Antonio, Texas, Sarah. I know San Antonio. San Antonio is a beautiful place. I love it. It's a great place. I know San Antonio. San Antonio is great. All right. George, I am like you. Yeah, I mind. Yeah, I, I don't know what you mean, but yes. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Here we go. So we learn about these uses of like, and I bring now here a review, a review so you can remember what we learn. Okay. So I mind that you're ready. This time around, I, I, I bring a different exercise we haven't done before. All right. And it's a question and scramble and scramble. I'm not sure if you are familiar with the word and scramble. Maybe you are familiar with the expression and scramble eggs. I think, you know, sometimes I, I love scramble eggs, scramble eggs, scramble eggs and breakfast, you know, this time is and scramble, you know. Yeah, so what you are going to see in this exercise, you know, is uh, you're going to see questions that are scramble they are in disorder and we are going yes they are mixed you know good eduardo in argentina eduardo yeah thank you for being here greetings from spain darling i got students from spain as well that's great claudia from washington thank you good good i know washington beautiful place as well matilde hello hello all right so we are going to see some questions that are mixed they are in disorder your mission, dun, 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 dun. your mission is to unscramble these questions and organize the questions. That's what you are going to do. Not difficult, isn't it? So let's try to do it. So this is the way it is going to work. I will show you on the screen the question that is scrambled, is in disorder, is mixed. You are going to have some time and you're going to write the correct question on the chat. In, the, in this way, we are going to remember the uses of um, the uses of like. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So let's do it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you um, the first scramble question remember you are going to organize it and here it is this is the first scramble question what is the correct order you tell me i will read you guys okay i mind you are thinking you okay what is first what is second okay and i'm waiting for you guys Let 
me see, let me see what we got. I got Valeria Aida, and they said, what does your sister like? Or what does your sister like? What does like your sister, says Monica. Monica has a different order, all right? What does your like? Carolina, maybe you are missing a little th something. Claudia, what does your sister like? That's what your sister like, darling. Hmm. This is a nice exercise because we can check order. We can check order of, you know, words and questions. I, I see some of you who have the correct answer. And the idea is say hello to you. I'll say hello to you right now. Julie, what does your sister like? All right. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. The correct question is, the unscramble question is, what does your sister like? You know, but what does your sister like? All right, good. And this is one of the questions we practiced last class. And we can answer this question. We can answer this question referring to the preferences, the preferences of a person. For example, could you answer this question? And this is a bonus, extra bonus. Congratulations to the ones who did it right. Okay, the ones who didn't do the the question right, check the check the order and said, okay, what is what was my problem? No, what was my problem? All right, good. So, how could we answer this question using this picture, this prompt? What does your sister like? What would be the answer? I read you guys. Aida, she's kind. No, because we're talking about preferences. So pay attention to the picture. Pam, hey. Matilde, you have a spelling mistake there. Luis Alberto also spelling mistake. I, I know because it's your writing just. Yes. Uh, Aida, she's strong. No. We're talking about preferences. Preferences, OK? Good, Aida, preferences, all right? Rafael Chistron, yeah, you're asking, yeah. Hey, Monica, Monica says, my sister likes going, Monica, to the gym. Hey, Darlie says, my sister likes to exercise. She likes to do exercise, okay, Carolina? To do. She likes exercising, that's correct, Natalia. Hey, there's a little typo, I guess. My sister likes gym likes to go to the gym i would say she likes doing exercise my sister likes likes to go to the gym likes to practice likes to practice crossfit to practice likes to do exercise andres excellent my sister likes to practice exercise that's perfect andy yeah rafa yes she's a strong sister but the answer is she likes going to the gym Ida, i like that i like that carolina Mar, she likes to do you know, exercise. Beautiful, Carol. She likes the gym. That's perfect. All right. Oh, uh, Valeria has a question. No, Valeria, you don't need a specific level of English. We are mixed. We have a little of everything. Some people basic, some others a little more intermediate, you know, but there is always something for you to learn here. It doesn't matter what level you are. So don't worry, okay? So my sister likes working out. Elsie, that's a beautiful statement. My sister likes to cook. Okay, Maria Carmen, yes, no with the picture, but but yes. My, my sister, easy, don't forget the subject. My sister likes to do exercise. Got it, you guys got it. This question, she likes to work out. Beautiful, this question, points at the preference. What does your sister like? Remember, that's one of the possibilities. What does your sister like, okay? My sister enjoys to go to the gym. Enjoys going, Valeria, enjoys going. Always after enjoy, you use ing. That's a little rule in English, but don't worry. Okay, great. So are you ready for number two? Let's unscramble, guys. Here we have number two. I read you guys, I read you. Let me see, I'm giving you some some, some time to uh, unscramble this uh, uh, question. Whoa. 
Okay, nobody, no takers, no takers. Yesenia had a nice answer. Diana had a nice answer for the one before. Sorry, I'm just reading. Okay, so what is the correct order? We have Valeria, Valeria, Valeria. What is your best friend like? What is your first best friend like? Uh, Aida, Valeria, and Liliana. What is like your bestie? What is your best friend like? Rafa. What is your best friend? Elsie. What is the like? Uh, what is your best friend like? Eduardo. What's Mil Milky? You have a little typo, but what's your best friend like? Uh, Maria del Carmen. What does no? What is maybe? What is, okay, Maria del Carmen? There is no das in this question. What is your best friend like? You guys, you got it. Excellent. What is your best friend like? What is your best friend like? So, and this is another question we can use with like. And this time around, we are talking about, we are talking about personality or characteristic characteristics so what would be an answer for this for this question what is your best friend like what is your best friend like hey, Tatiana I that like goes at the end what is your best friend like okay remember what's your best friend like okay that's the correct answer good 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 Carolina what's your best friend like so the answer Uh, Michael, what is the reason like complete the sentence in question? In, in this case, what is your best friend like is an expression to ask about the characteristics of the person, the personality. Okay, so take it as an expression. Okay, uh, so we have some answers. He likes drinking coffee. No, Nata. My best friend likes going to the movie. No, Monica. My best friend is friendly. Yes. My best friend is friendly, Lina. Good. He's friendly, Yuli. He likes speaking English. Rafa, um, my best friend likes to drink coffee. No, Darley. Diana, my best friend likes to talk. No. He is talkative. Aida, I love it. He likes uh, selfish. I'm not sure, Andres. He likes to speak with Louis. My best friend likes to drink tea. No, no. Remember, we're not talking about what does your best friend like what does no what is your best friend like okay so the correct answer should be about a characteristic of the personality all right uh, Diana patricia just wrote a, an answer that i love my best friend is smart and lovely that's a great answer okay my best friend um, is intelligent my best friend is friendly. My best friend uh, is intelligent, is smart, you know. Uh, when you talk about he likes, you are answering the question that we had before, okay? And I really want you to emphasize on that. I I'm going to go back. What does your sister like? She likes exercising, she likes coffee, she likes pizza, she likes you know, preferences, what does? We are asking that question with the auxiliary, what does? This time around, we're using the expression, what is your best friend like? And we're talking about characteristics, normally personality, you know, yeah, normally personality, you know, uh, talking about those general characteristics, all right? Good, good, yeah. So um, my best friend is, uh, Pretty okay. I'm not sure. I'm talking about characteristics like like personal. My best friend is smart. My best friend is happy. Not necessarily to say like. Not necessarily. My best friend is always. For this question, the answer is a characteristic. He's brave. He's uh, talkative. He's friendly. He's smart. He's intelligent. Okay. Remember that you can describe a person's characteristics or a place like for example for example if i asked uh, i don't remember who's uh, from barranquilla you know somebody who's from barranquilla i said what's barranquilla like 
So what's Barranquilla like means what are the characteristics of Barranquilla? It's hot, it's happy, it's, it's big, you know, you're talking about those. So my, my he is polite, all right, polite, Liliana, is wise, whatever. Very good, very good, guys. So remember, we are talking about characteristics here and no physical characteristics. We are talking about other characteristics. Anyway, review, review. If you have questions, check session 24. Let's continue. What about the next? We have this question. Ta -ta -ta -tan. Let me read you. What is the correct order? Lina, I'm going to read your comment. The answer for your question is here in this next question and scramble, Lina. Right here is the answer, okay, Lina? So check it. We have, what does she look like, Aida? What does she look like? What does she look like, Natalia, Andy, Carlo del Mar, very good, Vale, Diana, beautiful, Lina, excellent. What does she look like, yeah? Uh, Rafa, Tatiana, great, guys. You got this straight. You got this straight. Uh, I, I, and here is where the answer for the question that Lina was asking is, what does she look like, you know? And here we are talking about that physical traits, you know, those characteristics that are physical. Um, and maybe you could give me an example with the picture that I'm, I'm showing you right now, guys. So. Uh, she looks like her mother. I could answer like that, Carolina. Yeah, I could answer like that. Yeah, uh, what else can I say, for example, about the picture? What does she look like? What does she look like? What 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 could I answer, you know? Yeah. Uh, Darley, you are translating? Okay, yeah. Maybe, maybe that would be, I'm not sure if that's the correct question in Spanish, really. She, Julie, she has, remember, eyes, has, uh, she's beautiful, yeah, she looks like Miley Cyrus, okay, Natalia, she's very pretty, yeah, yeah, what does she look like? She looks like a princess, okay, good, she looks beautiful, all right, she's got blue eyes, she has, so she has, remember, she has blue eyes, she's pretty, yeah, she looks like my sister, but with green eyes, she looks happy. Happy Andy is is no physical, okay? Yeah, oh, but anyway, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not physical. I, I know the smile and all that. She's slim, very good, Albedo. She looks like a rock star. She's tall. She looks like a teenager and has blue eyes. Lena, what a nice answer. Uh, she looks in a good shape, in a good shape. Uh, she's tall and beautiful. She looks tall like no she looks tall she looks like a grandma uh, i'm not sure fresh and informal like a top mother she looks young uh, she's got short hair she's slim she's tall uh, she's got green eyes whatever okay great yeah good so we're talking about physical physical characteristics and, and i want to go back a little what does she look like physical characteristics was that was she like or was your friend best friend like personality you know other type of characteristics you know uh, what does your sister like preferences preferences all right good yeah so very good so we have the last question guys very good very good and this is the last question a little trickier all right, a little longer, but I'm sure you can do it. So I read you guys, I read you. Uh, John Freddy, uh, I would say she has short hair, John. Looks like short hair, no. She has short hair, or she's got short hair, you know, a little more British. All right, so what about this question, guys? What about this question? Let me get it sip of. Uh, Valeria and Aida says, um, where would you like to go next week? Natalia says the same. Where would you like to go next week, Bibi? Where would you like to go next week, Lina? 
Thank you, Lina. Very good. Thank you very good. Where would you like to go? And we know that when we say where would you like to go, Carol, very good, very good, Carol. Tatiana, excellent. A little typo there. Uh, Diana Patricia, where would you like? Andy, excellent. You guys got this straight. Thank you, Rafa. Excellent. Very good. And we know that when we use the would, where would you like to go? We are talking about something different. We're talking about a, that wish. You're expressing a wish, you know? Like, for example, in the picture, where would you like to go next week? What would be a, a, a good answer for that, guys? Yeah, a good answer using the picture. Julie, Claudia, easy. Very good, very good. Lily, beautiful, beautiful. And the correct the correct structure is, is beautiful. I would like to go to the beach, Natalia. That's, that's what I was looking for. Aida, I like to go to the beach, or I would like to go to the beach. You know, I would like to go uh, to Cuba for vacations. Ooh, good. Where would you like to go next week? You know, and I hope you keep on practicing, you know, the different uses of like. So we have four different uses of, of like. Very good, guys. Diana, Yesenia. I like to go to the beach. I would like to go to the beach. Yeah, you know, good, good. You're expressing a wish. Very good, guys. And this is the end of the review. Don't forget the four different uses of like to ask about the characteristics of the object, to ask about the preferences of a person, to ask about the physical characteristics and to express wishes very good guys we have done a great review carolina you would like to go to cali come to cali whenever you want very good very good so don't forget this guys take a screenshot you know keep it here keep it here you know don't forget it all right we will keep on practicing all right good um we have our new topic today. The new topic is something that is not that difficult, really, you know, and, but, but it's very important. And it's very important because we are going to study the different uses of some modal verbs. Uh, and I mind that you've seen this before. If you have studied English, you know, before, if you have seen, you know, some videos maybe, and you have seen this topic, model verse. And it's a big topic. It's a big topic, but we're going to start small, as we usual, uh, you know, do here in this class. We're going to start very small. All right, good. So here's the question. This is the question to start, you know what are modal verbs you know i mean what do you think a modal verb is you know uh, sebastian uh, can you give me an example of of your question just you ask if it is necessary to use the word light to finish the question what question what question can you please write your question so i can help you uh, so uh, anybody knows you know uh, Claudia asks if it's correct to say I want to. Yes, yes, I, I I want to is correct to say, but not necessarily is a wish. Maybe it's something that you want in this moment. When you say I would like to, is a wish in the future. You say I want to go now, and you go. <laughs> you know, so so you know it's different. I would like to go. That's different. Okay, good. So. Anybody, can, does anybody know what a modal verb is? Because we, we have verbs, we have verbs like actions, you know, play, go, uh, speak, listen, watch, you know. What are modal verbs? That's the question. That's the question, Valeria. Thank you for paraphrasing. It's a more formal way to speak or write in English. Thank you, Aida. Very good, very good. Uh, where would you like to go next week, Sebastian. In that question, it's necessary to use the word like. That question is incorrect, Sebastian. Where would you like to go next week? Like doesn't go at the end. Okay. Andy, Andy, give us some examples of, of models. Could, should, ought to, may, might, can. 
those are some examples. Great, great. But uh, what is a modal verb? Because, you know, the examples are there. Can, should, may, will, you know. So I'm going to tell you what a modal verb must. Valeria, yes, those are modal verbs. We, we know our verbs, you know. But do we know what they are? Because that's the most important at this point. Modal verbs, you know, are verbs that modify other verbs. They have a superpower, I call it. These verbs are super powerful, you know, because they modify other verbs. Not all the verbs modify other verbs, but modal verbs can do that. When you have a modal verb, like for example, could, should, must, the examples that you gave me there, these modal verbs can modify the meaning, the intention of the speaker, all right? Would, very good, Diana, excellent. All right, so modal verbs are super powerful verbs, modify other verbs, okay? So let me give you an example. We have a sentence, I play the piano. That's a very basic sentence. It has one verb, the verb play, well, play the piano, you know, and we can express that activity with the verb play. But as we have the super powerful modal verse, with one modal verb, I can modify the meaning of this sentence. I can use one, one modal verb to modify the meaning of this sentence. Let me read you. It's a, it's a form to modify the principal verb. Claudia, thank you for that uh, definition. That's good. So I can modify the meaning of I play the piano. I play the piano means that it's my routine to do it. I do this. You know, I play the piano. It's a routine. But if I use a model, for example, can, I change the meaning. It's different in the intention and the meaning to say I can play the piano because I'm talking about my ability. I'm making emphasis in my ability. I have the ability to do that. I can play the piano. So I modify the meaning. And if I use another, I may play the piano. It has a different meaning, you see? That's why modal verbs, you know, are super powerful. Valeria, can I play the piano? That's a, that's a good. I would play the piano, says Diana. That, that changes the meaning. I will play the piano. That changes the meaning. So all these, all these modal verbs, I should play the piano. You know, so there's a different meaning. So that's why modal verbs are super powerful. So remember, modal verbs, modify the meaning and the intention of what you say. That's why it is very important that we learn, you know, may I play the piano? That's a correct question. I must play the piano, says Aida. And that's a different meaning. So all these sentences have different meaning thanks to the model verse. Thanks to the model verse. You, you guys got it. You guys got it. So this is a big topic. It's a big topic, you know. Uh, the modal verbs are held by the context, of course, you know, good. And it's a big topic, but we are going to study only three modal verbs today in these minutes that we have. There are different modal verbs. I'm showing you here some different modal verbs and, and, the, and the uses of these modal verbs. We have can, could, may, my, must, should, will, would, and we have others. We are not going to start studying them all, right? For today, I brought three models verse, you know, three models. We are going to talk a little about the use of can. We're going to talk a little more about the use of may. And we will finish talking about the use of should. So we're going to concentrate on this uh, three model verse, okay? I can buy a car. Mickey, I like you to check that. Yeah, you know, Claudia says, I should play the piano. The piano. I should play the piano. I, I play the maracas, but not the piano. All right, so here we go, here we go. Pay attention to me. Well, you, you guys are going to participate with me, all right, good. Let's start with can, 
all right? That is a modal verb that many of you have seen and you say, oh, I know, I know how to use this, okay? Can has four uh, objectives, four uh, functions, four possibilities, you know? You can express an ability, you can express permission, you're asking for permission or giving permission. You can express possibility, you know, you're talking about a possible thing, or you can request using can. Okay, request is when you ask for something. All right, so we have these four, these four uh, functions of the a model can. Yeah, you know, good. And I have here four examples. I want you to match which example, number one, two, three, four, is an ability. Which example is permission? Which example, I give you some seconds to think and you are going to think, okay. Mm -hmm. Number one maybe is permission. Mm -hmm. I give you some time to think. I read you guys. Gina, can I ask you a question? I don't know if that's a, an example of a model or you want to ask me a question, but it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. Valeria says, number two ability. Very good, Valeria, you see. Laura says, number one possibility. Gina says, can I give you a piece of advice, Gina? A piece of advice. You don't say uh, advice, all right. Ability number two, Bibi. Thank you, baby. Ability number two, my father can drive very well. Okay. Number two and number four are ability. Mm. Number one, possibility, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Mar says number one, possibility. Rafa says number two, four, number two, four, what? Number two, request. Number two, ability, Andy. Number one is permission, says Ida. Diana, two ability. I, I think we got that. Oh, Caro, Caro del Mar. Number two ability. Number one permission. Three requests for possibility. Thank you, Caro. Very good. Very good, guys. Yeah, very good. Oh, Gina, you can cook paella. I love paella. That's great. Three requests more. Tatiana, two ability. Very good. So, so you can see and identify the different uses here. We are going to check. Remember, Sometimes is the contest. The contest help you a lot. It help you a lot. All right. The contest of the of the whole question. So let's check. Let's check. So we can. We have. If I finish the meeting early, I can call you. That's a possibility because I'm helping myself with the with the condition. If I finish, I can call you. It's a possibility. All right. Good. 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 My father can drive very well. That's an ability. I'm making emphasis in the ability. I'm, I'm also expressing that it, it, he does it very well. Can you please pay attention? That's a request. You know, I'm asking you to please do that. Can you please pay attention? And can I open the window is permission. You know, you're asking for, oh, okay, can, can I go out tonight? Your, your, your kid says, you know, good. So you're asking for permission. It's, it's informal, but you are doing it. Okay, good. Alonso, Alonso. Let's see if you got that ability to permission three. Oh, well, you got two misstep there. Remember, request is when you ask somebody something. All right, good. Can you please pay attention? You're asking that. You're requesting that. You know, permission is when you're asking for that permission. All right, good. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So remember, can, possibility, ability, request, and permission. Your mission, try to think of other examples. Let's keep on going. We have three, remember. May. May has three uses. Permission, similar to can. Possibility, similar to can with a different degree and polite requests, polite, you know, more polite requests. And I have the three sentences. You guys tell me. Tatiana, I, I would say that it depends on the restaurant. If it is a very elegant restaurant, I would use may. May I have the check, you know, um, may I have the, 
you know, the, the menu, you know, something like that. Yeah, may I use your bathroom, you know? Okay, good. I, and then I, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you, you know, with this, all right? So which one is permission? Which one is possibility? Which one is polite request? You guys thinking, you guys moving things, all right? Aida says that number one is possibility. Okay, dude, thank you, Aida. And Laura says that number three is permission. Thank you. Yeah, good possibility. I may go to the party next Friday, baby. You know, yeah, Valeria goes with one polite request, two possibility, three permission. Very good. Great, guys. Thank you. Laura, Aida, good. I'm not sure about your name, AQVT, but all right, Aida, Laura, Bibi. Polite request, may I go to the bathroom? Good, Rafa, thank you, Carolina, Carolina, excellent, excellent. All right, let's check it out, guys, let's check it out. I may go to the party next Friday, is a possibility. I may, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, you know. May I have your name, it's a polite request. And may I go to the bathroom is permission. Yeah, yeah, also polite or polite, okay? So we have these different uses, all right? Different uses there, okay? Different uses, all right? Of the modal verb may, you know? I may go, yeah? I may travel, you know? I may study, I'm not sure, you know? Good, good. As I said before, look for other examples. Keep it in mind and look for other examples. Even though in two weeks we will do a little review. And the last one, I'm just going to show you because it's very easy. It has two, two uh, uses. Should is used to give advice, okay? Or give a piece of advice. Remember that advice is not countable. Give advice in general or a piece of advice and uncertain prediction. And certain prediction is, is, is a prediction that you say, mm, I'm not really sure about this prediction. I, I have nothing to really, you know, base my, my prediction on. So here I have two examples for you. Um, you are not going to match because this is self-explanatory. You should go to the doctor. That is giving advice, you know, you, you're giving advice. You should go to the doctor, you know, or uncertain prediction like Mary should be home by now. Color, she should be home. It's a prediction, you know. Yeah, at this time, you know, no, it could be, you know, there's a possibility. So Mary should be home, you know, by now. Color, all right. So here is 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 you know, yeah. Um, Natalia, I'm I'm not sure about your your question. Uh, yeah, give advice. Oh, okay, it's give advice. Yes, you should go to the doctor. You should do this. Uh, you should do that. Okay. So remember, this is what we have, you know, and remember how important, you know, um, how important the, the, the auxiliaries, the modal auxiliaries are. Why? Because they are super verbs. Okay. They change the meaning of other verbs and these are the three that i want you to have clear in your head with these possibilities that we study today you know can that is most commonly used for ability but you can also use it for permission possibility and request may that is used for permission possibility and polite request a little more polite and should most commonly used for giving advice but you can also um, express an uncertain prediction. Here it is for you guys. Keep it in mind, more vocabulary, more things we can say. Remember, the more we know in terms of vocabulary and in terms of using that vocabulary, yeah, the more you can say in English. Uh, Andres has a, a, a little comment there. He says, uh, normally we use can more yeah, the may. Yeah, yeah, you can be right, Andres. I, I, I would say that generally speaking, and depending on the context, you use can, you know, a lot. But there are other situations in which you use may a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very common. 
Yeah, uh, the, there's an expression in English that is may I, may I, yeah, you know, me permite, may I, and it's very commonly used, you know, commonly used in English, you know, you say, oh, may I, you know, may I, you know, so, so there are, there are, uh, I would say, contests that uh, the word is used more or less, you know, yeah. Okay, yes, Liliana, try. Right. All right, all right, guys. Very good, very good, good. Keep it in mind. This is knowledge. This is extra vocabulary. This is extra uh, uh, ways of saying things in English. I mean, again, the more you know about vocabulary, the more you know about rules, about how to express yourself. Okay, I have the possibility to, to say a polite request in English and say, hey, may I have your name? That's great English, all right, good. So you do it, do it. I mean, don't, don't be afraid of all this, all right, good. So here we go, here we go. I'm going to move now. We, we, we have like 15 minutes to go, it's incredible. To the pronunciation area. <laughs> and, and, and my pronunciation tip of today is a tip that is very common. It's very common, I'm telling you. I mean, this is one of the most common um, sounds in English and it's one of the most difficult sounds in English because we don't have it in Spanish for those of you who are Spanish speakers uh, first tongue is Spanish you know so you, you will see what I'm talking about the famous sound of the TH the TH you know that many of us we know that that sound excels in English is different but we don't have it in Spanish. So, I mean, there's a complication there because we don't have it in Spanish. And as we don't have it in Spanish, it gets a little difficult to use it. So I'm going to show you just, we're going to talk a little about how to pronounce that sound, you know, how to, you know, make it happen. And we're going to talk a little about how to practice it, which, which is, I think is, I mean, the, the most important, really, really. All right, good. So, yourself there, try pronouncing these words, okay? I have three words for you. I want you to try to pronounce this word individually. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining you, you know, there. And you can see that in these words, uh, you are doing it, you are doing it. Okay, I don't want to interrupt you. Okay, in these words, we have the sound of the TH in three different positions. At the beginning, I'm going back, like in this sound, there. In the middle, like in this sound, toothpaste. And at the end, like in this sound, you know, bath. All right, very good. I mind that you did that. Okay. How do you pronounce the sound of TH? First thing, to create the TH sound, pay attention to this, this explanation. Let's see if you can make it. It said, place the tongue, you know, on the button of the upper tooth. So you got your upper tooth. So you place the tongue there. And your tongue should almost be sticking out. You know, and then you blow air between the tongue and the top teeth. You see that, that that's the that's the um, the instruction. You know, like uh, taken from the book of pronunciation. So, hmm? and then you know, wow, you stick it out a little. You know, and that's the way you pronounce it. Okay, good. Uh, and then you know, uh, I just says use the tongue on the middle of the teeth. Okay. Uh, Rafa has a little uh, something there. It sounds like a D, but it's really it's not really a D. You know, it's a special sound. Remember, it's a special sound. It doesn't sound like anything else. Is, you know, and so that's the way you pronounce there, there, toothpaste and bath. That there's there's the the air goes between there. The air goes between. So this is the way you pronounce it as i said before taken from the pronunciation book this instruction 
for some of you, this might be abstract. Like, I mean, how am I going to do all that thing in my brain? So I say, practice makes perfect. And the best way of practicing is, I have two suggestions for you. Number one, look for words that have the sound in different positions, okay? Look for words that have the sound at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, okay? Words that have that sound at the beginning in the middle and at the end. So, uh, can you guys uh, tell me some words that have the, the sound at the beginning? At the beginning. Yolanda, good afternoon. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Oh, don't hablar espanol, Yolanda. All right. Uh, 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 so, words that have uh, that word, that sound at the beginning. Claudia has one. Claudia says this, this. All right. Thank you, Claudia. Natalia has another one, a little more difficult. Throw, yeah, throw. Oh, okay, AKV, A AKVT has there, okay. Though, Maria Paula. Three, Rafael, very good. So, so you can have those words, th those. Thips, okay, thousand, all right, Patricia. So you can have that and you can make a group. You can make a group. Elsie says, think, think. Lina, great, same word. And with those words, you can make a group. You can make a group like this, and you can practice. Thin, think, thousand. So you practice with a group, yeah? Thin, think, thousand, the, three, you know, all the words that you have there. Very good, guys, very good. Thin, that, you know, that, thinking, whatever. Very good. Now, words that have the sound in the middle. Tell me, I read you. Rafa, that's good for the beginning. In the middle now, in the middle, in the middle. Marlene, that's a good one for the initial. Ooh, Andy, where did you get that word? Flame thrower. <laughs> you know, okay, Andy, I got you, good. So in the middle, Andy has one word for the middle. Claudia has an, another, I love it. Nothing, you know, nothing. Oh. Diphtheria, you know, Andy, wow, man, you got some book up there. All right. Um, that word, Aida, I'm not sure about that word. Uh, it sounds weird. Sebastian, another, anything, mother, Carolina, very good. Uh, although, very good, Rafa. And we make another group with the words that have the sound in the middle. Something, a KVT says, Weather, Maria Paula, nice word. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, further, further. Very good, Ida, bit word there. Okay, so you make another group with those words. I, I have some words here, examples together with yours. Healthy, birthday, panther, you know, and you practice with your group. Again, initial, thin, think, thousand. Middle, healthy, birthday, panther. Good. Practice makes perfect, guys. And you add your words there, okay? And we'll have some other words at the end, at the end also, okay? Uh, there are some good uh, words there like bathroom, earthquake. Okay, yeah, some compound words, yeah. Uh, healthy is not at the end because the last sound is Y, all right? Good? Okay, good. Yeah, filthy, that, that would be good. Yeah, uh, when we talk about the end, and now you are going to think of the end, is the last sound is the TH. Like Andy says, 15th. Martha, path. Patricia says, south. Very good. Rafael says, tooth. Health, very good, Ida, excellent. Birth, length, you got it. You name it, you got it. All right, guys. And you make another group with that uh, sound at the end, like month, earth, mouth. And you practice the whole thing, guys. Thin, think, thousand, healthy, birthday, panther, 
month, earth, mouth. And it's going to stick uh, to stick in your brain, guys. This is the way. Okay. So that this is a strategy I'm proposing. But I have another strategy, and I mind that some of you know the strategy. Some words there I see excellent. Uh, Rafa, Marta, Aida, Natalia, Lucy, thank you for participating so much. All right. My next strategy that I I'm, I'm gonna leave you with this one is use a tongue twister. What is a tongue twister? That's what a tongue twister is, okay? And I created one. It says, Elizabeth's birthday is on the third Thursday of this month. Try to say it there in your house. Try to say it, okay? Elizabeth's birthday is on the third Thursday of this month. All right? And create your own tongue twister is a fun way, you know, of practicing pronunciation, not only with this sound, with many sounds that we will see. Okay, good. Yeah, so yes, practice it. The tongue twister, right? Yeah, it's a good way of practicing. Uh, and I hope you can create your own uh, tongue twister so you can work, 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 work with the pronunciation. A nice way of, of, of working with pronunciation. So, that's with the sound of the TH. I hope you guys practice and you just, you know, nail it, you know, totally. All right. Neat. Very good. Very good. No, Marixa, thank you guys. We're going to finish. Yes, Rafa, what we have there, tongue twister, tongue twister, Rafa. That, that's the, the, the translation of that word, Rafa. All right, good. And before you go, guys, before you go, don't go. Don't go without your idiomatic expression of the week. Your idiomatic expression of the week is hit the books. All right. That is what you are going to do, I guess. To learn English, she not only hit the books, but also practice conversing with others every day. Hit the books. Hit the books. What does that mean? What is the meaning of hit the books? I, I hope you guys hit the books now, you know, during during Holy Week. Uh, thank you, Rafa. Thank you, Andre. You're saying goodbye to me, you know. So anybody for the meaning, what does hit the books mean? We have a couple of minutes, three minutes. So tell me, I'm reading you. What does hit the books, you know, mean? Marlene says, study really hard. <laughs> thank you, Marlene. I, I love that. Uh, you don't hit the books, Marixa. Hit the books. You need to hit the books. Studying, says Andrew. The secret is some practice and, and talk to others. Okay. Love, Gina, with, with a question mark. Love. I don't know. Okay. A person who studies a lot. A person who studies a lot. Okay. Is not a person per se, but is the activity. Is to study hard. Is to study hard, you know, yeah. As uh, Marlene said, you know, to study a lot, Claudia, yeah, yeah, to hit the books, you know. So, so somebody said, "Hey, what what are you doing during the weekend?" He said, "No, I I gotta hit the books, man. I ha I have a term uh, or a, a test, you know, next week, you know, yeah. And not also read by study, okay, Martha, hit the books. So." I, I hope uh, you have liked the class today, guys. That's what I had for you today. It's, it's a pleasure, always. I don't know if you have any questions. We have a couple of minutes. So if you have questions, this is a great time to ask your questions. I, I will see you in two weeks. Remember, next Monday, we don't have a class. I know, I know. It's hard for me. My, my heart is in pieces. But in two weeks, we will have class again. All right, good. Rosa says, comer libro. I, I have heard that. Thank you, Rosa. I think that would be, you know, yeah, yeah. Hit the books, please. Yes, very good. Guys, thank you very much. Yeah, excellent class. You guys are something, I'm telling you, you know. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in two weeks, Monday, 5 p.m. I'll be streaming here from Cali, Colombia, Centro Cultural Colombo Americano, and uh, the sponsorship, you know, of the Programa Colombia Nasune and, and the Cancillería de Colombia in Houston, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Rafa. Take care, Marlene. Have a nice one. Thank you, Carol, Andy, Claudia. You know, see you. See you, LC. See you in two weeks then. Yes, please kick the books. Pick the books, all right, yeah? Please, please do that for me, all right, yeah? 
Ok, Gabi, Sira, <laughs> take it easy. Bye bye, Gina, Patricia. I will see you here, guys. I will see you here, ok? Ok, so be good, be good, and study. Hit the books, hit the books. Thank you, Yuli. Thank you, Aida. Thank you, Rafa. Happy week, happy week for you guys. Take it easy. Hey, no class next week, Marixa, but we have class in two weeks. Ok, Carolina Almar. Two weeks. I will see you here. I hope you come. I'll be waiting for you guys. All right. Good. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Next next Monday. No, but in two weeks. Yes. 5 p.m. All right. I'll see you. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, well, we, we have some minutes there. I, I'm saying goodbye to you. But anyway, you know, thank you. Thank you, Marixa. Thank you. Thank you, Faneri. Aida. Take it easy. A Monday. Monday, 5 p.m. Colombian time. Always. Wherever you are. I'll be waiting for you here. I'm always waiting for you here, guys. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I'm almost still on the air. If you have any questions, thank you, Eduardo. Thank you. Thank you, Alonso. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right. Let me see, guys. Let me see if I'm still on the air. I'm still on the air, guys. I, I, you are there. I'm here, you know. Normally it finishes, but it's